Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So it's been a little while since my last video, but I thought I would do something different today and return to my existing music collection, just because the last four videos have involved talking about collection updates, four in a row, and that's because I've had a lot of music coming in, but I thought in order to change it up and just keep track of my general collection, I'm going to go back to my existing collection today, and there's more music to come. So. Where we're up to in the alphabet, if you've been watching for a while, the last video in my existing collection involved a dissection ranking. So we're continuing down the alphabet today to talk about something a little bit different. Today I'm going to talk about my Dokken collection. So of course, Dokken is probably a band which needs no introduction to most people. They are a famous metal band from LA, US, and they're kind of a band which has defied classification over the years. Like in general, you could say they're a metal band. A lot of people have categorized them as hair metal or glam metal and I don't I don't know if that's entirely accurate because in you, they're not exactly like Poison or Motley Crue or Warrant they were a bit more serious not, not as gimmicky in terms of outfits and personas that kind of thing maybe that's just my interpretation but at the same time they they definitely had more in common with those bands than say Iron Maiden or Judas Priest so they were very glammy in that LA scene, but um, I really think they have a unique sound, so I'll get into more detail when I talk about that each album as I go down. So I don't own all of, all of their albums, just a few, and they include the essential ones in my opinion, so without further ado, we'll just get straight into it. Alright, so the first one I have in my collection, this is Dokken with Tooth and Nail. So the, if if you're familiar, their first album was actually Breaking the Chains from 1983. I do own that one, but on vinyl. So this one is Tooth and Nail, which came out in 1984. Classic album. This is considered by many as one of their best. Just to go into some detail about the band. So what I like about this band is that every musician is a highlight. You know, often a band is about the guitarist or the singer, you know, being the vocal or guitar hero. But I honestly think the vocals, guitar, bass and drums are a highlight with Dokken. Every band member is on fire, so it's fantastic. Um, this band, they focus more on atmosphere than a lot of those other glam metal bands. So it's, as, as I said, it's a bit more serious and it's very emotive and atmospheric music. Don Dokken has this amazing, clean, melodic voice. George Lynch is, is, is of course, a brilliant shredding guitar player. And then Wild Mick Brown on drums and Jeff Pilson on bass complete the lineup. They all provide great backing vocals. But anyway, this one came out in 1984. It's a very good one. As I said, most people consider it their best. Um, it's not the best for me, actually, but um, I'll just take it out of the case. I would probably say, I'm not doing a ranking because I don't know, own all of their albums, but this is their second best to me. So a da damn good album. Like... Um, it starts with Without Warning, which is a slow atmospheric intro, and then Tooth and Nail is a great song, the title track. Now, to be completely honest, there's a couple of tracks on here where I don't think they're filler, but they're nothing that exciting, um, in my opinion. So, those songs are Just Got Lucky and Heartless Heart, but having said that, they're very catchy and easy to sing along to, so it's still a very enjoyable experience. Don't Close Your Eyes is a good song. When Heaven Comes Down, that's sort of a slow chugging track, which is very catchy, especially with the chorus. And my absolute favorite song on the album, and possibly my favorite Dokken song ever, is Into the Fire. Just with the clean guitars, the vocals, the backing vocals, there's so much atmosphere on that song, particularly the vocal performance from Don in the chorus, when they say Into the Fire, and he says, I'm falling. Such a brilliant part. And the backing vocals at the end, as I said, great. Fantastic shredding solos, which are melodic from George Lynch in that song, which is great. Then Bullets to Spare, that's another one of my favorite songs. Great memorable lyrics in that, and it sort of paints a dark picture. Fantastic. And then the, the hit single from this was Alone, alone Again, which is like a tear-jerking ballad, you know, about breaking up with your girlfriend and then you're alone. Um, it's not bad. Like, I, again, it's not one of my favorite songs, but I'm always singing along because it's so catchy. That's the good thing about this band. And then um, they finish with a fast track, Turn On The Action, which is upbeat with a lot of shouty vocals. It's fantastic. And then at the end, they pause and then there's just this blistering shredding solo from George Lynch, instrumental to end the album. So absolutely fantastic. So just show you the cover art, which is pretty cool. 
picture of the band looking very young there. And then lyric sheet. So this is from the 80s, so pretty bare bones and basic. But the good thing about this band is with Don's vocals, they're very clear, so you can actually understand what he's saying. You don't need a lyric sheet. Boring 80s disc there. Yeah, so as I said, not my favourite Dokken album, but my second favourite, but brilliant, so check it out if you haven't. That's Dokken with Tooth and Nail. Okay, now the next album I'm going to talk about. This is undoubtedly my favourite one. Spoiler, I'll just get straight into it. This is Dokken with Under Lock and Key, which came out in 1985, so one year after Tooth and Nail. And I think perhaps this is my favourite for nostalgic purposes, because it was the first Dokken album I ever heard. Um, Forgot to backtrack, actually, but the way I discovered this band, I was really late to the party. It was about 11 years ago when I was living in Australia. I went to Utopia Records and I'd always heard about this band and they had this album in the bargain bin, along with a lot of other old school heavy metal bands that I'd overlooked for a long time. So I took a chance and bought this one and absolutely loved it. That's the funny thing about growing up in Australia, bands like this tended to fall through the cracks because the Australian music market, it's only the big blockbuster, big hit bands in this genre which became famous like Poison, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, but bands like this fell through the cracks, but I'm making up for lost time. 11 years ago is when I discovered this album and I haven't looked back. It's absolutely brilliant. So um, what is interesting about this album, um, Tooth and Nail was still quite raw actually, raw and gritty, which suited the music, but this album, the production became a lot more polished, but not in a bad way. It's just the instrumentation and the talent had improved. There was so much musical quality, so the production had to reflect that. And I think it really does on this album, an absolute masterpiece, 10 out of 10. Again, this album explores the more soaring atmospheric heights, like Tooth and Nail was a bit fast and aggressive, for, for the most part, but this one they really take the atmosphere to another level, so I absolutely love it. So it starts off with Unchain the Night, that's the first song I ever heard by Dokken, and it's an absolutely brilliant one. Fantastic chorus, chugging riff in that, great backing vocals, awesome guitar solo. Then you've got The Hunter, which is just an infectiously catchy song, especially with the chorus. Um, in My Dreams, completely catchy, it's, it's brilliant, I just love that song. And Slipping Away, that's, um, or Slipping Away, that's a sort of slow, soppy ballad. And at first I thought, that one doesn't grab me, but with Don's vocal melodies on that song, when it grows on you, it, it's actually really good. Then at, to conclude side one, you've got Lightning Strikes Again, which is just brilliant, like so fast. That's a fast and thrashy song, quite aggressive. And the absolute uh, climax of that song, in my opinion, is at the end when Don, you know, the they do that part, lightning, lightning strikes again, and Don's vocals are just so piercingly, soaringly high, it's fantastic, like showing his vocal hero qualities there. Then we go over to side B, It's Not Love, incredibly catchy, great pre-chorus and chorus in that. It's a song you want to air drum along to, and I think even Don is air drumming to that song in the clip, so there you go, It's Not Love, fantastic song. Jaded Heart is one of my favorites, that is a slow song, but that's one where they take the atmosphere to epic heights, um, great melodies in that song, the chorus, and just the, the, the blend between the chorus, the, the, sorry, the vocals and the instrumentation, it's fantastic. So that's a song, Jaded Heart, I'm singing my heart out on that song. <laughs> Maybe sad, but it's true. Then we've got Don't Lie to Me, that's another one of my favorites. Like That reminds me of an, a soundtrack to an 80s movie, like Rocky IV or something like that. Like um, you know that chorus, and again, Don's vocals in the chorus where he says, don't lie to me, don't treat me like a fool. Just these piercing melodic vocals, absolutely fantastic. As always, George Lynch's guitar solos are shredding yet melodic. Such a talented guitarist, that guy, it's unbelievable. And of course, Jeff and Mick are great backing vocalists as well. And then we've got, now the last two tracks don't grab me as much, they're okay, like Will the Sun Rise, it's not bad, but it's just not one of my favorites. So, but. As I've said, with Dokken, you're always singing along because the music's so catchy. And then they finish with an aggressive closer till the living end, which is fantastic. But without a doubt, in my mind, this is the pinnacle of their career. Some people may disagree with me, but if you haven't heard this, definitely check it out because it's brilliant. So just to recap, my favorite songs on this would be Unchained the Night, The Hunter, In My Dreams, Lightning Strikes Again, It's Not Love, Jaded Heart, Don't Lie to Me. So that's the majority of the album. Okay, so here again, 
We have a small lyric sheet. Again, not necessary. Oh, picture of the band, cool. Not really necessary because you can understand everything Don is saying, but um, yes, do yourself a favor if you haven't heard this album because it's fantastic. Atmospheric glam hair metal at its best. That's Dokken with Under Lock and Key. Superb. All right. Now, up next, coming up to another album which came out in the 80s, the fourth of their 80s albums, fourth and final of their 80s albums. This is Dokken with Back for the Attack. Often this is regarded as their best by a lot of people as well. I will be completely honest. When I first heard this, I wasn't too bothered by it. Like, I, I didn't think it was bad. I thought, yeah, yeah, it's Dokken and I enjoy it, but it was nowhere near as good as under lock and key, or even tooth and nail for that matter. That was my opinion at first, but something happened to me. Over time, this actually grew on me. So I think here that, you know, the instrumentation, the songwriting have matured, but they sort of grow on you more subtly. And sometimes that's the best kind of music, but I actually really like it now. This album recently celebrated its 35th anniversary and I listened to it on the day, as I often do with anniversary dates. And I admitted, yeah, this is a fantastic album. Um, a couple of filler tracks in my opinion, but in general very good. Like it starts off with Kiss of Death, that's got a really good raunchy uh, guitar riff in that. Prisoner is a fantastic song, just so hooky and catchy. If you're not singing along to that chorus, I don't believe it. <laughs> um, Night by Night is brilliant, that's another song where they uh, soar for the atmospheric heights, like especially that the bridge in that song where he says, when the shadows fall, there ain't no room at all. I think something like that, but yeah, just the vocals, just so atmospheric, it's fantastic. Uh, now, Standing in the Shadows, kind of a filler song to me, but it's catchy enough, like at, at the very least with Dawkins songs, you're singing along. Heaven Sent, another brilliant song, like so catchy. And I remember actually when I was walking around a shopping mall in Thailand at a record shop, they were blasting this on the PA, like playing it on the record. And I thought, fantastic. Like, um, if you don't know that song, it's very, soaring and emotive so it's a brilliant song heaven sent then you've got the aggressive instrumental track mr scary which is one of their famous songs that's pretty cool now going over to side b yeah i just feel some of these songs are kind of fillery to me but that's just my opinion like so many tears yeah it's okay burning like a flame i have to admit i think the chorus of that song is a little bit cheesy you know our love is burning burning like a flame not just the lyrical concept but also the just the, the melody, yeah, it's a bit a bit 80s cheesy, you know, in an overt way. But that's but again, as I said, with with all of their songs, at the very least, you're still singing along. They're catchy enough, but there's just some which don't really stand out as much. Much. Then you've got Lost Behind the Wall. That is a grower. That song, like very subtly catchy but brilliant. Um, Stop fighting love. Yeah, another very 80s song, but again, that song's grown on me, so it's pretty good. Cry of the Gypsy. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. And then Sleepless Night, that's um, again got a very sort of 80s chorus, but a good raunchy riff in that song, which is good. And I always think of it when I can't get to sleep, no wonder. And then it finishes with a highly atmospheric track, Dream Warriors, which was of course featured on the soundtrack of Nightmare on Elm Street 3. So um, if you've heard about the trivia surrounding that song, like um, the band actually got to meet Freddy Krueger, and I heard about uh, an amusing experience they exchanged with Freddy and his uh, long fingernails. So uh, if you've heard that story, it's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, Dream Warriors is a great atmospheric song. So as you can probably hear from my description, I'm not as enthusiastic about this album as the previous two that I've discussed, but it is still a very good album. I just feel there are some songs that are just not so standouty and kind of fillery, but at the same time, a lot of them have grown on me. But without a doubt, what are my favorite songs? Prisoner, Night by Night, uh, Heaven Sent, and Dream Warriors. So those four tracks, they're brilliant, and this album is worth it for that alone. So just show you the cover here. So portraits of the band. No lyrics, but again, you don't need them. Cover art is kind of iconic. I think it's a little bit boring, but yeah, not too bad. And again, just the boring 80s disc. Yep, so as I said, a lot of people regard this as their best. For me, it definitely isn't, but it's still a very good one and it has grown on me a lot. So it may take some time when you listen to this one for it to grow on you. So um, anyway, still a very good album. That's Dokken with Back for the Attack. 
Okay, so I've just finished describing three of the four 80s albums. The first one is Breaking the Chains, which came out in 83. That's a brilliant album. I'll discuss that album when I'm showing my vinyl collection, you know, um, when I'm up to that. But now, after that, at the end of the 80s, when grunge came in, that was the big thing. A lot of these hair metal bands, you know, saw the light and thought, there's no point, the industry is changing and they couldn't make any money or, you know, they had lost their popularity. So a lot of bands broke up or just uh, took a break for a while. And then Dokken did, so I think they actually did break up, not just because of that, but I think personal differences within the band. But in 1995, they actually came back with an album. This is the next one that I'm going to talk about. This is Dokken with Dysfunctional, which came out in 1995. So this is the reunion album. You can see a couple of the band members have had haircuts, so George and Mick. Yeah, I think so. Sign of the times there. But um, what I will say, a lot of people think with these 80s bands, like the classic albums, you only need the 80s ones and that's it. Maybe so. Like I would say the ones I've just described are the most essential. But this is still a very good album. When I heard this, I didn't have high expectations, but I thought, actually, it's really good. So, uh, yes, what is different about this album, what I like about it is, you know, a lot of these hair metal bands, when grunge was coming in, a lot of them tried to become grunge overnight, you know, or like, uh, like Def Leppard with slang or, you know, as an, as an example, or certain other bands, they went in a really grungy direction. This band did not, but what was smart about it was they retained their hair metal sound, but they subtly incorporated some grunge influences. So I don't want to describe this in excessive detail, but basically what this sounds like to me is Dokken fused with Alice in Chains. Yeah, really. So yeah, the first two tracks on this, which are Inside Looking Out and Hole in My Head, they are unashamedly hair metal songs and very atmospheric with great uh, vocal performances from Don again. And then as the album goes on, it, it incorporates more of a grunge influence, but it's like a blend between hair metal and grunge. The Alice in Chains album that it really reminds me of actually is the self-titled one, you know, the one with the dog on the front. They incorporate that dreamy sound from those Alice in Chains songs like, um, what is it, Brush Away? Yes, stuff like that. So it's sort of like a blend between 80s hair metal Dokken and that Alice in Chains sound and elements of the Alice in Chains album Dirt. but. It just produces really good results. It's just like a nice fusion in a subtle way. So they see that the times and the music scene were changing, but they didn't abandon their old sound and they incorporated some of the new sound, which I think is really smart. And some of the songs on this are just fantastic. Like the other night I listened to the whole album, there wasn't a single song I disliked. So I'm not going to go into every little nuance of this album, but I'd just say, don't be cynical. Check it out. Just because it's a 90s album, you know, post-grunge era and everything, it's actually really good. So, here we have the lyric sheet and photos of the band. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, a lot of people are quick to dismiss when these 80s hair metal bands produced albums in the 90s, but I think some of them are really good. Like the Motley Crue self-titled album with John Karabi, I think that's a great album, like so underrated. Like, maybe it's not classic Motley Crue, but it is still a brilliant album. So, be open-minded if you like this band and you haven't heard it. Check this album out. I think it was a great comeback. And later on, they went back to their, you know, purest hair metal sound. But um, in the meantime, this was a great 90s album. So, that's Dokken with Dysfunctional. So, that's actually it. They're all the Dokken albums that I own. Of course, they did many more. And as I said, they went back more to their purest hair metal sound later on. I think the album Lightning Strikes Again is supposed to be a resurgence of that old sound, but I haven't got around to listening to those, believe it or not, but I just think Dokken is an absolutely brilliant band, and although I was late to the party, I, I still enjoy them, like discovered them 11 years ago, and I still listen to them quite a lot, and as I said, if you haven't heard them before, don't think it's like Poison or Motley Crue, or it's it's not, but it, they have more in common with those bands than Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. So it's sort of like subtly a hair metal band, but also just oh, fuck classifications. You know, all these specific categories that we give music. It's just damn good metal music. So check them out. Anyway, guys, so um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know some of you like extreme metal. As I said, I've got a lot more new music coming in, but I'm trying to change it up a bit. 
So going back to my existing CD collection, I might talk about my existing vinyl collection next, just to change it up, and then some more releases to come. So I have a ton of music coming in and it's not going to stop. So I hope you keep watching. So thanks again, everyone, for your support of the channel. Um, please continue to watch and I'll be back soon with another video. So in the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.